Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from thehealthyamerican.org. What in the non-spinning world? You've probably heard me use that expression before. And I do that because I want to pique your curiosity to think about possibly opening your mind and considering that you have been lied to about the shape of our earth, the fact that it may not be spinning through space, the fact that God created humanity and the earth as the center of his creation. And I know there might be some of you right now clicking off, unsubscribing, and all that does is show that you don't have the ability or desire to open your mind and possibly, just possibly, consider a different perspective. I have just been interviewed by Dave Weiss, and he has a couple of YouTube channels that I will leave for you in the description below. And he also has a website that I'll share with you right here. And I have been a guest on his show before. So this is over at the flat earth podcast.com. There is an app that you can get. There's a lot of information that you can find here about the world and how your view of it as spinning through earth and uh, orbiting around the sun, revolving around the sun might bear taking a deeper look at. So I want to air this video for you, and I would like you to have an open mind. This is not an exhaustive video with all of the details and information and evidence. That's not it at all. It's actually more of a top-down view in terms of why people are hesitant to consider another point of view about the world, about the earth, about history, about what we were taught, why people experience cognitive dissonance, meaning something that they believe so strongly. And then when evidence is presented for a different reality, they bristle against it and why it's important that we consider the shape of our world and what we've been taught about it. So it's a little bit more of a bigger picture. So I hope you'll enjoy the interview with an open mind, and I look forward to reading your comments below. Thanks, everybody. And remember, I've got a Substack that is a type of blog newsletter that you can get for free, and I will also have some images and links for you along this topic, and that's over at peggyhall.substack.com. Good to see you. I was, uh, hold you on. You too. Hold on. Hold on. We've got a, a quick cameo. I'm not going to be able to hear you. Hold on. Step in. Hi, Peggy. <laughs> this I'm is Paige. Paige. How are you? Where, where do I look? Where do you I look? look you can look this <laughs> right there. I wanted to see your face responding to me for so long and not just one sided when I watch your video. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, what a joy. Wonderful. And I love you. What in the non spinning world is going on? Is that, is that your time? You know, I got it. It is. And I have to just, people are starting to repeat it. And then they're starting like, oh, think about it. So just little seeds like that, because, well, you know, Dave, I love people you. don't, don't want to hear. Yeah. Oh, well, God <laughs> bless you. You're, you're just a, you're a light in my day always. And um, keep up the good work. I don't need to tell you, but thanks for everything. You're the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. This is Peggy Hall. If you don't know who she is, I don't know what's going on. Maybe you don't have internet connection. Um, Peggy was uh, uh, was the first person that pointed, you know, that um, I saw her pushing against uh, Southwest. She wouldn't go on because they were requiring a, um, a muzzle. And uh, that was my launch into uh, the awareness of that silly situation. So I've been listening to Peggy ever, ever since. The HealthyAmerican.org, right? That That's org. right. And uh, she's That's got amazing stuff. She helps so many people, anything you need. Um, that's the place to go. And I, as I was saying, I watch all of her videos. She's so good. And, um, and one day she said in the non spinning world, I was like, I took that clip and I made a little video and you saw it. And now we're talking, you actually came on uh, the summit we had and uh, made a great presentation. So I'm really happy to talk to you. Well, Dave, you know, likewise, I have watched so many of your videos and uh, I do have that little tagline, what in the non-spinning world? And sometimes people hear it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they unsubscribe right there and they use, uh, you know, ridicule rather than um, reason. And I want to talk about that, about lies that we've been told and cognitive dissonance 
And I just want to have a conversation about why people uh, don't want to admit that they were duped. I think it's a sign of intelligence to go, whoa, I have new information. Let me make sense of this. So I've learned a lot from you. I've been compiling uh, memes over the many years and months uh, recently as well, because I think sometimes people need to see images to just sort of jar their awareness and say, oh, that doesn't make sense. So I'm all about digging deeper, asking questions. I don't have all the answers. I, I sure don't, but I have a lot of questions. And I think it's important that we expand our, our mind and our perspective to consider um, all the ways that we've been duped. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, on my app, by the way, it, I have a meme section and you can just search, like let's say we search for um, Lem from the Lem from the moon and they're all of the pictures. It's got to load for a second. Um, I love it. So when you're talking to people, you can pull up stuff really quick. It's great. Some people are starting to use it in their, in their video making, in their live streams, or where they're able to pull up stuff real quick. So um, I agree, you know, it, uh, the world is memes are um, a very effective way of communicating. That's I probably got these memes from your app. <laughs> You'll <laughs> probably see them like, hey, that's fine. <laughs> probably, probably. It's okay, but I got them from other people too. I don't make everything myself. We're, I just compile information just like you do. And, um, you know, and I come up with some of my own stuff. So here we go. Um, welcome, welcome to our discussion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, Dave, I need to say that the community around the truth of our world is growing. And as many people who hear me say the non-spinning world and unsubscribe, I get the same number of kudos saying, I knew it. I knew that Peggy would be onto this. And, but I always like to start the discussion with people like, think about all the lies that you've been told in your life from people that you know that actually love you, right? We've all been deceived in certain ways. And then think about things that you believed just because you were taught and that you didn't question. And you know some simple things here that don't make sense to me, like war creates peace. Now, I know there are people maybe in this audience that believe in war and just war and so forth, but when you think of that sentence, like it doesn't make sense. You know, how does killing people stop killing people? Maybe that's a, a poor example, but think about, you talked about, I couldn't get on a plane unless I was going to suffocate myself for a respiratory illness. So now we're going to restrict our respiratory system <laughs> for a respiratory illness. None of that made sense either. Some invisible particle that is just like a boogeyman out there to make people get sick. It can't be seen, it's not alive, but somehow it can infect and kill you. So you start to question like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. It, then it we're makes, told- it, it makes total sense. And I'm really upset that the people didn't wear um, glasses for the eclipse because I'm now blind. <laughs> Exactly. They didn't care enough about you. How dare yes. they? How dare yeah. They? I always say, you know, better put on a raincoat to keep other people dry. And yeah. when you start to think about this, I, I sincerely understand this concept of cognitive dissonance where you're going along your life and you're believing things. And it's like you have the rug pulled out from under you. And I do think that there are some people that just have a, a a more innate ability to detect the BS, I call it hogwash, and to go, hey, wait a minute, you're not gonna bamboozle me. And then there are others that haven't learned or don't have the ability to stand up for themselves, that they're living a more fragile kind of um, life or existence where they don't want the apple cart to be upset. Just don't tell me, it doesn't make any difference. What difference does it make the shape of our world or the spinning earth or non-spinning? It doesn't affect me in my daily life. Well, I'm going to argue that it does. And I'm also going to say that think about, you know, areas that you've been lied to, like CO2 is harmful. Well, CO2 is the molecule of life groundskeepers of greenhouses pump CO2 to increase the yield. So how can that be harmful? Now, again, this might be news to some people that are listening, but think about everything that is being promoted in the media and not only think about it, question it. And I see it as a sign of intelligence to question. So I just want to change the perspective for some people that are holding so tightly to some beliefs and that feeling like they're letting go is going to put them off center. I think this is a really important part of the conversation before we can move forward to remember that, you know, the the powers that shouldn't be, or the bad guys, the puppet masters, the evildoers, the government, whoever you see as having power over you, these political institutions, educational institutions, scientists, politicians, they have an interest in controlling you, period. And once you accept that, 
and you have evidence for that times that you've been duped and swindled, then you can say, okay, wait a minute, maybe this bears deeper digging. It really troubles me. And, and I know Dave, you have such a, a thick skin and I love that you call yourself the flat earther and all like, bring it on. I think it's a, it's a moniker that, you know, you're, you're proud of because you're not allowing them to ridicule you, you. And in the media, you'll see again and again, ridicule against flat earthers as though like get with the program that's been disproved, you know, 500 years ago. Well, actually up until 500 years ago, everybody agreed that the earth was terra firma, firm earth. And it wasn't until very recent in our history that uh, those sun worshipers came back into the forefront and wanted to take, because I come at it not only from a common sense perspective, but a biblical perspective. I know that's not for everyone, but coming from that view, if God, as the Bible says, created his creation as the center, his centerpiece, then like, how come the Bible didn't mention all of the other planets? Think of how that's spelled, P-L-A-N-E, plane. It's a plane, a flat plane. How come those weren't mentioned? And where in the Bible does it say that the earth is spinning? It doesn't say so. Yet there are dozens upon dozens of Bible verses that actually give evidence that the earth is firm, it shall not be moved, that the sun rises and sets, that the sky is drawn like a tent, a canopy, and we can go on and on. But the point that I was trying to make here is for people to just open up and consider another point of view without easily dismissing it and rejecting it through ridicule. That is not a sign of intelligence. That's actually the, the opposite of intelligence. <laughs> so me, keeping an open mind. Yeah, go right ahead. Let, let me interject just a couple of things. Um, people are waking up. This is just a map of the people that are using my app. It, it's growing crazy. So um, the other thing is, the you said the mainstream media is um, they're making fun, ridic ridiculing Flat Earth. They always straw man us. They never talk about facts. They always use a straw man, which is a fake argument, and claim that that's our argument. So they're wrong. Like we know more about their model, the globe model, than they know. The people that are trying to defend it, it's kind of hysterical. And then uh, you say, you know, recently, um, it wasn't 500 years ago. It was less than 100 years ago. They were still teaching flat earth here on earth. I, you saw my interview with Ruth. She was born in 1918, and she was taught flat earth in school and uh, in, in public school here in Connecticut. And um, there's other people we talked to that said in the 50s and early 60s, they were teaching both because they didn't know. So the whole thing got changed over a century and, uh, you know, in pockets and, and stuff. And so now, you know, it, it, they have to straw man to, um, to get us, to get us, to, just to keep people trapped in that, in that paradigm. It's crazy. And then. Yeah, so, that is, uh-huh. Just one, one other thing, and don't lose, don't, don't, don't lose your train of thought. You know, we're conspiracy theorists, right? Well, it used to be a conspiracy, conspiracy that the USS Maine was used to get us into, um, get us into the into um, the war with with Spain, but now it's disclosed information. And uh, the, they lied about the Lusitania to get us into World War One. Now that's disclosed, right? They lied about Pearl Harbor. It used to be a conspiracy theory that that got us into World War Two. Now it's disclosed. They lied about the Gulf of Tonkin to get us into Vietnam. They now admit it. Why isn't there a revolution, right? Hey, the CIA admitted to killing John F. Kennedy. Why isn't there a revolution? What? Why are people too floridated? Um, they lied about the babies on the floor to get us into the Gulf War, about weapons of mass destruction. And this is the one that's key to me. It's Gaddafi. Um, they lied about Gaddafi to start the war in Libya. And Gaddafi, if you look into him, I have, a, I have a video on my channel. I encourage people to go look it up. It's called The Great Man-Made River by Muammar Gaddafi on my channel, D-I-T-R-H, stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Um, I contend he might be one of the greatest leaders of all time. And we were trained. I hated him my whole life from what the news was telling me about him. And uh, it, that's all another thing. So back to you. Sorry. But this is exactly it, Dave. When people can connect new knowledge to previous knowledge, and you just gave a whole litany of all of these lies that people believed in our modern day that were proven, actually, those that were perpetrating the lies came out and said, oh, guess what? That wasn't exactly how it was. So you just gave that evidence that people can go, yeah, hey, I have been lied to about many things. I want to answer the most common objections I get about this. And that is why would they lie about this? And it's too big of a lie. Well, you've heard, everyone has heard, the bigger the lie, the easier it is to um, you know, swallow because 
for that very reason. People say, how could they all be in on it? Well, number one, they don't all have to be in on it. The ones who are basically peddling this, it comes from NASA. And there probably are some very sincere, genuine scientists that are compartmentalized within that agency that think they're doing good work. And then there are others that are in on the, the um, script. And I've done videos on my channel as well about the NASA artist who readily say, these are all computer images. And the reason I mentioned NASA is because that is the only evidence that is brought to us that says, this is the shape of the earth. We have pictures of it. Men have walked on the moon. And this has been you know, debunked so many times. I'm not here to talk, uh, to debunk all of that other than to say that is the only argument that is put forth that has gotten people um, hoodwinked. Like, well, NASA, and I can see the, the round. So, but I want to talk about why would they do that? Because once you understand the nature of the bamboozle, you'll, I think you'll be a little bit more incensed. Like they're not going to pull the wool over my eyes. That's the attitude I want people to take instead of um, thinking I'm too smart to be duped. No, the smart ones are the ones that say, hey, what are you doing? You guys had me there for a minute. That's the smart and intelligent response. The opposite is keeping your head in the sand and saying, I don't want to hear about it. So let me just give a couple of reasons why, and I know you have many more, but first of all, again, it minimizes the importance of the human being to say that, you know, God uh, has so much more going on in the universe. You're just an insignificant speck. How many scientists use that exact expression? I'm an insignificant speck hurtling through the universe and the universes that are continually expanding. Uh, no, there's no evidence for that. There's no evidence for additional suns. All of those are computer generated images. And NASA even admits that. So I take actually umbrage at, at this concept that I'm sort of an after, afterthought of God's. So they remove mankind as the center of God's creation. They put the sun as the center of God's creation. And for those Christians that have studied, you know, pagan religions, that is one of them, worshiping the sun. It's come back to the center. The other thing that really bothers me, this has nothing to do with religion, Dave, is and I think this is the one that really gets me the most. Pushing this narrative that we're on a spinning ball, you know, revolving around the sun and we don't have any evidence of it in our own physical world, in our own senses, it causes people to distrust their own senses, to question what they know is true and to say, well, I guess the authorities must know more than I do. This is huge. It teaches people to not believe their own conscience, their own instinct, their own wisdom. And I want to show real quick here, I'm just going to share my screen because think about babies. And this always got to me where parents would get these <clears throat> toys for infants. And look at this. Why is there a model of the you know solar system for infants? It is indoctrination at the very here. Here you got it, Chris. I always, I always say, it why is there a solar system? They indoctrinate them before they can even talk. They before they have the ability to think. You send a kindergartner to school. There's a globe. They're they're doing um, worksheets about the orbit of the sun and the moon and the earth. Yes. They're, and here's for the kids. Yeah. Oh, and all the, all these games. If you go into like a, a a big a big box store, which I know that you don't, but even a bookstore. Um, books are expensive, high quality books. They take, uh, you know, there's, there's manufacturing involved. You can get the, like a book this thick with uh, high quality paper, color, beautiful embossed, hardcover, all about space. And it's $5.95. You can't ship it for $5.95, right? But they're, they're selling these things at a loss because you, if someone buys that book, they're going to keep it. It's going to be like a keepsake book. It's going to be their go-to book. It's all about indoctrination. And th this is the lie that lets them get away with the boogeyman and the wars and everything else. Because if you're spinning and you're lost, and I just want to touch on the thing about the creator. Um, I, you know, I was, uh, I grew up not very spiritual. We, I was born into a non-practicing Jewish family. I looked at Christianity. I looked at all these things. And uh, you know what? I went on a young life trip. I don't know if you've heard the story, but it's worth telling. 
I went on at Young Life as the young kids, they, they, they took them to Bermuda. All my friends are all Christians are going to Bermuda and I can't because I'm Jewish. So my parents said, okay, go. I was like, awesome. <laughs> so we had a, a, my first Bible study. We're out on the edge of this cliff in Bermuda. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And the first passage he read was that the stars fell to the earth. And I'm like, oh, this is garbage. Stars would eat the earth, right? And from that point on, I disregarded all religions because of that incident. And it wasn't until I discovered that this place is intelligently designed and there's a creator and I have no other choice but to accept that. And I think that's why this is the most important lie because if they have you in a place where you can decide creator or not creator, then they've got you, they can, they can manipulate you. But if there is absolutely no other choice than a creator, imagine if everybody had that, if everybody was in that situation and then everybody can have their personal relationship. So. That is so powerful, Dave, and I agree with you. This is the biggest lie of all because it's not, it, it's exactly what you said. It is minimizing mankind. <clears throat> it's minimizing God's greatest creation. And it is putting us as an insignificant, like a random, just like it happened accidentally. And I reject that wholeheartedly. And I think even people that are professed atheists, if they really took time to consider and reflect and contemplate the existence of life, it doesn't make sense to have any other choice than we were created. And we were created for a purpose and a reason. And this is why I do get somewhat frustrated with my uh, fellow Christian brothers and sisters who have somehow taken God's word and use it as allegory. So when there are Bible verses, and I've got this beautiful image that a uh, healthy American sent me, and this is really a beautiful picture. You probably have that on your app as well. And it says Psalm 104.3. And in fact, I probably have to type that in right now because I don't know what it is right off the bat, but I know it's important. And it's on my list of many Bible verses. And again, whether you believe in the Bible or not, uh, just you know, hearing some of these um, scriptures, I think, can help you put into perspective. Uh, it says, uh, the Lord lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. There are so many Bible verses that actually describe the earth. Now, I do want to say that a Christian objection, and I know there will be many Christians listening to this, is that some of the passages in the Bible, we can't take at face value. And so my question is, well, which ones do we and which ones don't? If you're talking about Lot's wife turns around and looks and she's turned to a pillar of salt, do you think she really was turned into a pillar of salt and crumbled? Well, the Bible says she does. And many Bible-believing Christians will say she did. But then when it says the earth is God's footstool, they'll say, oh, well, that's just, it's just a figure of speech. Well, you can't have it both ways. So I will say, fine, that's fine. Show me in the Bible where it says there's more than one sun. Show me in the Bible where it says that the earth is spinning. And I'd be happy to look at that verse. But the fact is it's not there. And that's where it's going to take the breath away of some people and go, Okay, whoa, 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 I gotta, let me take this in. And you know what? I have all the time in the world. I will be patient. I will be uh, tolerant. I will be compassionate. I will take you through it step by step. All I ask is that you don't reject it as a crazy conspiracy theory, which is demeaning of, of, a, of a conversation. I would never do that. Even for people that believe in all this other uh, hogwash about cooties, as I call it, I'll have a conversation with you. I'm not gonna dismiss you. Like, let's hear what you have to say. So show us, Dave, why, why we more evidence toward this. Well, there, there's so there's so much evidence, but getting to the Bible, I, you know, in my truth journey, I was I've been in the truth for decades. And um, if I'm listening to somebody's great and then they bring up the Bible, I would just delete them, unsubscribe and ignore everything else. They said I threw all I threw everything out even just because of that. Now it's like this is all fascinating. I have on the app, I have a, a 24 seven um, streaming Bible channel and then some key Bible um, videos right here. And I just encourage people, there's one video, the top video on the list, it's called um, Dear Pastor. And I, I might've sent it to you and it's a, it's a seven or eight minute video by my co-host Matt Long. 
talking to pastors that haven't figured it out yet, offering some assistance to them to help them see and to help them make up their own minds. And uh, I think it's uh, doing a lot of good, but there's so many good videos in there. So I always tell people, if you love the Bible, you need to watch all of these videos. And if you hate the Bible, you need to watch all of these videos, okay? Because, they're, you know, like if I click that list, I'm stuck. I just can't get out because I go to the next video and the next video and the next video. Yeah, yeah. I just keep watching and watching. And um, even if I've seen it before, I need to see it again. So there, there's, I don't know. Where, where were you going? Let, let me let me let me make a comment about the pastors because here's a perfect example. During all of the you know last several years when people were being discriminated against, oppressed, you know, in the throes of tyranny, and a lot of people did find some comfort in the few churches in California that were still open, and there were a couple of churches that did defy the government as they should have, and they were remained open. And I'm thinking, okay, we've got someone who can see the truth, who is willing to cut through all of the hogwash and not just accept what the government is saying. So imagine my chagrin and my um, despair when the pastor went up to the podium holding a little flyer about this size that had been on his windshield that said, uh, you know, for truth about the earth, check out these websites. And it was an invitation to learn more. Now, Christians do this all the time. There are Christians that will proselytize with little handouts. They call them tracks. They'll, they'll give people information to say, click here to learn more. And as a Christian, you wouldn't want that person to just, you know, you would want them to say, well, let me take a look at this. But the pastor got up from the pulpit and started to ridicule. I mean, if you don't want to read it, throw it away, but to ridicule. And he went so far as to say, if you believe in the flat earth, you are not welcome into this church because that is of the, I don't know if he said of the devil, but he said, you're not welcome in this church because that's not our doc doctrine. I was floored and I did not go back to that church. I, I, I actually don't really attend churches for many reasons. I like to have a one, you know, communion with the Lord. I do have, um, my husband is a pastor and I have a couple of pastors online that I follow, but I got to the point where you are supposed to have um, the heart of Christ. You, you should be compassionate. And if you believe this person is off, uh, you know, going onto another path, then bring your evidence and have a sermon about it. But to ridicule, to demean somebody who is seeking the truth, that is not of the Lord. So that is, uh, it, it really harms my soul. And I understand that probably some of my pastor friends that are watching this may, may be saying, oh, you know what, Peggy, I, I agree with you on the cooties and on the, you know, this other stuff, but you, this year, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, prove me wrong, prove Dave wrong, take a look at his video, a message for the pastors, and you know what, don't even listen to Dave, don't even listen to me pray to God for discernment. He will show you. God showed me this path. Dave, you, you were one of the very few uh, in the beginning that I started watching. I'm like, this is undeniable proof. And I can only say that the Holy Spirit directed me. I, uh, I totally agree. The, I had a good point. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, <laughs> well, I was saying how they ridiculed those in church. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll remember what it was in a second. Um, there, we yeah. had, uh, there was a pastor with one of those global uh, church, the big giant churches down in Tennessee that uh, was going off on flat earth and pastor Dean Odell, who's on the flat side, um, got, had a debate. We yes. went down there. There was thousands of us there. Pastor Odell went out, came out with 41 perfectly described verses, right? And they're literally undeniable. He came out with a list that he found, a meme that he found on the internet of 200 Bible verses. And we all agree 90% of them are garbage. Flat earthers agree. We don't agree with that list, but that's the one. He didn't debate Dean. He debated this list he found on the internet. Yeah. And it's, it's the straw very, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's always, you always have to straw man to fight, you know, to, to uh, defend the globe. But I'm finding like a lot of these large churches, these global churches, these, these, these <laughs> global. Right? Yeah, well, in global vision Bible church is the name of his church. Yes. Oh, wait, Peggy, you'll like this story. So one of the one of the verses that Dean talked about is God scrolled back the sky and let the waters in, right? Yes. I forget what, I'm, I forget the exact verse, but um, he denied that. The other pastor denied that's what it meant. Then a month later in Tennessee, God rolled back the firmament and it snowed so hard his entire church collapsed to the ground. Oh gosh, that is really powerful. It, Dave. Got, it got flattened. 
right? His entire church got flat, and it doesn't snow that much in Tennessee. No. And, and uh, so I, the irony there is insane. So, Well, uh, Dean Odell is a healthy American. He sent me his book. I want you know my viewers as well to check that out. There are pastors that are teaching this. My, my overall message for this video is uh, set aside the ridicule, friends that are sincerely questioning why I say the non-spinning earth. The other thing I have to say is people will jump to conclusions. And I want this to be an opportunity for people to think, just think and dig and, and pray and contemplate and consider and ask for God's guidance on this. Because even when I said the non-spinning earth, people immediately jump to a conclusion to say, I'm a flat earther. And I, I do believe it is a dome. And I say that specifically because I am using an example of people drawing a conclusion. They heard things that I didn't even say. I've never, I don't have any problem with people using the phrase flat earth, don't get me wrong, but I specifically don't say it. And then people jump to the conclusion that I said it. And I want to use that as an example of listen carefully. And I, I did a video about why you should be a Karen because I have a healthy American Karen that's been doing all this great work. People didn't even watch the video and they didn't understand my humor. And they ridiculed me for saying, I can't believe you're, it's like, you didn't even watch the video. You're leaving a review for a restaurant where you didn't even eat. Friends, don't leave a review for Flat Earth until you've done the research. I, I need to say something else, Dave. There are, and, and I know you know, there are the, I don't even know the right phrase to use. There are those that are presenting information about the flat earth to make it appear as though people are off their rocker, just like they do, right. you know, with the anti-vaxxers or whatever. That is done intentionally to malign and demean and diminish the good work of people like you that have done your research. And you've had this, I remember you telling me when you were in school, and you were asking the teacher about a oh, bucket of water. Somebody else had that <laughs> same story. They, they, they're still doing that in school where they spin the bucket around. And I think he said it was third or fourth grade that it was. So I thought it was, I didn't remember if it was kindergarten, first grade, maybe yeah. third or fourth grade. I don't, I don't quite remember, but um, they're still doing that, the spinning of the water. And I was like, doesn't the water need to be on the outside? And the teacher's like, well, that's the way I'm told to teach it. That's how you become a teacher. You memorize and regurgitate the Rockefeller nonsense and then you get an A and you can be a teacher. It's amazing. Yeah. It, so amazing. That, that is my, yeah, that, that is my, my, my plea is think, research, question, have an open mind. Otherwise we're back to the conversation with people about cooties. As I, as I say, they shut you out. They don't want to hear that the symptoms are the same as the flu. They don't want to hear that the, uh, you know, protocols are harmful. They don't want to hear it. It's like, well, at least let's have a conversation. So that's what I'm asking is respect, dignity, um, a free exchange of ideas. And if you have information, not from NASA and not from your fourth grade, a uh, science book that you want to bring, I'd like to see it as well. But all of the evidence that I'm seeing and, and my own evidence with my own eyes is the most important. I'm not spinning. And I, and it's a good thing we're not because I get motion sickness. <laughs> well, I, just wanna, I just want to comment. You said, I'm not a flat earther. I, that's fine. What I say is we know that we're not on a scientifically impossible spinning ball flying through an infinite space vacuum. I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's, that's a fact. Now, is this world, world flat? It sure appears level, horizontal, and non-rotating. It has hills and valleys. That's really flat. <laughs> That's right. There, there's a whole bunch of, I call them flat earthers, that say I'm not a flat earther because there's hills and mountains. Okay, we're just playing semantics here. Yeah. So non-rotating, a topographical non-rotating stationary plane, and we are at the yes. center of creation. And uh, that that and that itself is empowering. You know, maybe it's something like this. We live on this plane inside this toroidal field, and all of the stars are spinning around. It, it's responsible for the motion of the sun and the moon and everything. I don't know if we can ever understand God's creation. It's it's this is an incredible place. Um, but the greatest thing that I have about uh, since becoming a flat earther, flat earth Dave, if you will, um, I'm never bored. There's this world that's fascinating, <laughs> right? I used to think, okay, you know what? I know everything, right? And when you're a glober, you know it all, right? But you don't know anything because if you knew your own model, you would disregard it.
Well, you know, that even using the word globe, and you said that there's the global churches, global vision, yeah. there is a global, you know, I call it the one world disorder. And so the fact that they are constantly pushing this globe, and people are using it in, you know, logos, and there are very strange applications for it. It is, it's just commonplace. It's almost like having, you know, some other symbol that just has made its way into our everyday lives. And so that is another way. Yeah, there you go, right there. You take their ball away. You know, Dave, let me show a couple of the of the yeah. memes I have. I want to know if these I, I, are I, on I, your before you flip. Before you, that, so you're trained as a child that the, the, that's your whole foundation of your world, right? You take a ball away from a child, that just transitions into this. A, a man is just a little child inside. His whole world foundation is wrapped around this globe. And then all of all of my favorite movies, Star Trek and Star Wars and all, all the, I love space, right? But to me, I think space makes more sense on a flat earth, but that's the whole thing. Let's go into your, your stuff. Well, absolutely, Dave. And again, speaking from a biblical perspective, when God, when God says the heavens are above, okay, so what does that mean in Australia? Wouldn't the Bible say the heavens are around us? And when you go into the depths of hell, it's the depths. So where exactly is that? Wouldn't it be, and you can find all different translations, but it all is going to support what we recognize and acknowledge with our God-given senses. So I just want to, I, I have a couple of these memes oh. that uh, probably came from your app, but a couple, this is, here are the videos that I did. Um, I don't know if that's large enough. Uh, oh, wait, meet not, the NASA. Not, not oh, let, let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen. So uh, I'm on YouTube, The Healthy American. I do a show every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, and I have this um, these couple of videos I did. Meet the NASA sci-fi artists, and they actually say, "Yes, I'm an artist, and this is the other work that I've done." And the you know scientists will tell me what to do. We put the color in, and here's another one: strange images from NASA. How do we get crystal clear images from space and they can't even get a clear picture of the guy that robbed 7-Eleven? I mean, it defies logic. It is tied in with, you know, the man on the moon and NASA because that's what people will go to to say, well, yeah, we went to the moon. We have pictures of the moon. Well, these are just some of the, the memes that I grabbed because I thought they were really important. And anyone that has seen the horizon Anyone that has done any construction, you have a level, it's water level. We even use those phrases. Um, the rainbow shaped like a dome. Again, this is my image. It could be right, it could not be, but I have no evidence that we are spinning and flying and that the, the sun is the center of the universe. Um, I just want to go through some of these. I'll probably make a substack on this, which is peggyhall.substack.com. But just from a a uh, physics standpoint, Dave, when you think about things like the Suez Canal, these railroads that are being laid down, none of them are account, none of the curvature of the earth is accounted for. There are mathematical ways of determining, you know, how much curve per mile, but that never happens. So right. those things to me are like defies logic. Right. The, the, the Suez Canal was built on a, uh, a datum, a straight datum line for 100 miles. There should be over a mile of curvature, a mile, a mile of curvature. But there's none. They accounted for none. Yeah. So that that can't be explained. And then I wanted to look at some of the since we're talking about Christianity, many other uh, traditional cultures have some sort of uh, flat dome round no ball. Okay. And this is a Chumash. This is ancient cosmology prior to the Copernican Nicholas uh, Copernicus, uh, Copernicus, am I, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, and I have some questions about whether that person even lived because that could also have been, this is an Islamic view. This is interestingly Freemasons, which uh, also is kind of showing us their beliefs this is African, a circle, Celtic cosmology, and that the Bible also says a circle inscribed. It, that's Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah says the circle. Of, yeah. Look up the definition of a circle. A circle is a line on a flat plane where all points in that line are equally distant from the center. That's a circle, right? I, can I draw love a circle it. On my floor, it doesn't make it a sphere. And these ancient traditions have that as well. 
Incan, Chinese, Mayan. All right, we can see similarities there. And then we ha- so we have, I found that we Japanese. have one of the the talking puppets. Um, lying, I call him Lying Box, but it's I can't remember his real name. <laughs> Brian, Brian, uh, whatever the the, the English um, astronomer, and he says, "Yes, no ancient cultures ever believed in a flat Earth." He said that on a TV show. Yeah, it's stunning. This is the the rewriting of history. And when I was searching uh, or researching the eclipse, because I have many questions about that as well, and what I saw was paragraph after paragraph of ridicule uh, for people that are simply questioning. And then the other thing, Dave, were it was paragraph after paragraph saying, "Oh, uh, people have long known back in you know prior to uh, Galileo and Copernicus, they they knew that the Earth was round." Well, no, they didn't. So this rewriting of history is also intended to snare and ensnare those that just don't want to put the time in to think. And, and I, I understand there are people that gave up their responsibility, their personal responsibility over these last few years, you know, all of the medical and scientific stuff. They said, well, just tell me what to do. It's kind of like this, just, you know, my fourth grade teacher made it clear they wouldn't have all these solar systems. I mean, how could they all be in on it? Well, because they all are following what they were told. And there are those of us that are questioning. And Dave, tell me, when do you think it really garnered more steam when the communities of, you know, flat earth and questioning a spinning ball, when do you think that really gathered more steam in our, in our uh, current society? Well, in 2014-ish, uh, it started becoming popular on YouTube, and I discovered it right around 2014, 2015. And um, when I'd watch a video, YouTube would be like, oh, here, watch this, this, this person. And they up, they just fed me good, really good stuff. And so I'm going into it, and I went into it, as I said, trying to debunk it. I didn't try to find the truth. I tried to debunk it. And that's how you end up where I am. But um, in 2017, they changed the algorithm. And now if you search flat earth, you're just going to find complete and total garbage. You're going to find the disc floating in space and you're going to find, oh, the, the eclipse on the moon would look like this if the earth was flat and, and uh, all sorts of, again, straw mans. So in 2017, the, the term uh, searching flat earth overtook Donald Trump and Britney Spears were the, like, the top two. And when it overtook it, within a couple of weeks, they took down the scoreboard. On YouTube, you used to be able to search it. It says, oh, 487,000 uh, results. Oh, now, right. Now you get nothing because Flat Earth was number one, right? So so they literally hit it. And when now when you – here's the other thing. Peggy, I can go in uh, my YouTube history and say type in Peggy Hall. And all the Peggy Hall videos I, I, I've watched over the last – I don't know how far back it goes. It goes back years, I assume. Um, I can say, hey, I was, I was looking at a underwater basket weaving thing about a year ago. I could just type in underwater basket weaving in my history, and that's the video will show right up. It's an awesome history search. So you can watch a bunch of my videos, a bunch of Globebusters, a bunch of whatever, real videos, and they're all tagged with Flat Earth. And then you could go and search your YouTube for Flat Earth, and none of them will show up. And that's propaganda, right. And propaganda videos show up. There is no other topic where that happens. OK, yep. that there alone should that there alone does convince some people we, you know, Dave, what's the best way to convince somebody? Well, some people, it's the Bible. Some people, it's a physical test. Some people, um, it's, uh, you know, the video on seasons and some people, oh, they're hiding YouTube now. They're hiding Flat Earth. Now I want to look. So it all depends on, on the person. So I just find that as uh, amazing that they that they do that and people just can still deny it. Crazy. Yeah, well, I love that you said you started out to debunk it. And there are a number of, uh, let's say, born again Christians that did the same thing. They set out to debunk the Bible or, you know, prove that what they were being shown was ridiculous. And then they came to their faith that way. So I think having people, okay, debunk it, debunk this. And then they come across evidence that is so compelling. You know, let me share this one too. I think I, I love this about, we were talking about the water being level water level but it's curved how so many, these are things people <laughs> i was gonna say how many stretches of flat water does it take to make a globe yeah and then this one i just think is brilliant which one is not like the rest you've got the flat water flat water flat water and then rounded water it is difficult for people to accept that they have been lied to on such a scale it can be an affront people don't people want to feel like i'm too smart for that But again, my friends, you're smarter to see the truth and say, okay, okay, this is something that bears digging. That's where the intelligence comes from, not keeping your head in the sand 
And um, yeah, water level, it's impossible on a ball. Anyway, these are probably in your app as well, Dave. I think that these memes are at least attention grabbers for people. It's a good starting off point. And all I ask is for a civil discussion. And again, I understand people can feel that they're being attacked because like say, don't, don't take my ball away. But let's just talk about this. And um, I feel I think it's I feel empowered knowing that I'm not having the wool pulled over my eyes. And there are very few things that the government has been promoting that I can prove is you know trustworthy. So this falls into it. No, I, I agree. And and the, you know the the one thing we're all programmed to say is what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. And uh, you know you, you pointed out a bunch of things that it hides the creator. I think that's the biggest one. It hides more resources. It, it hides. Everything they're telling us about, you know, resources, energy, overpopulation, global warming, all of that is because you're lost in space, spinning out of control. Um, asteroids, nuclear bombs. I, I don't know how far down that rabbit hole you've gone, but you know. Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm with you on that. Yeah, so many lies that we've been told, and it, and it's all about keeping us in fear. And when you're in fear, that's you it. you don't have your connection to to. The creator, you, 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 that it, there's static on the, or, or resistance on that connection when you're in fear. And that's the other thing. I used to be afraid of a bunch of stuff. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. It's really strange. It's like nothing fears, you know, people are like, Dave, aren't you worried? I'm not worried at all because I'm on another level. I'm, it's like yeah. when you have, when the, listen, when the creator has your back, he's got your back. Right. That's right. So. And yeah, God alone numbers our days. And you know, the other thing, Dave, it's, it's living in fear. And then I, I take, uh, uh, you know, I take offense or I, 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 it bothers me when somebody tries to mock me. And that is what the government and these, you know, scientists are doing. They're mocking you. And I encourage people to look deeper into these government puppets that are trotted out like a uh, Neil, De Neil Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson, look at him, turn the sound off, look at his oh hypnotic gestures. All right. He's like a, um, he's a hypnotist and he is a magician in terms of trying his, his hands and all these are hypnotic, you know, this kind of thing. These are hypnotic gestures. I want you to turn off the sound and I want you to look at this as a showman and then do the opposite. Don't look at the video and listen to what he's saying and see if that matches up. He is a character performing a role. And Bill Nye, the science guy, is another one. He actually was a comedian, I believe, before they gave him that role. So they're mocking you. And if that doesn't make you upset, like, wait a minute, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I, I want to throw that out there, that they are ridiculing you and they're preventing you from digging deeper, just like the climate change people, just like the... Um, you know, I call it the cooties with this, uh, you know, contagious mystery illness. They don't want you to dig deeper. So they're using ridic ridicule. And as you say, Dave, the fact that they're hiding it on YouTube is a red flag that there's information that they don't want you to know. So embark on it. Just go with, a, with an open mind. Pray to God for discernment to direct you in these ways and then celebrate when you can break free. I mean, the entire Bible is about breaking free from deception. <laughs> Adam and Eve, the story tells us, fell prey to the deception of the devil. That is what I'm trying to present is break free from Peggy. the deception just like you know you're very careful with the way you say certain things cooties and you have different words yeah we don't say his name on this channel we call him neil disgrace bison or anything okay like okay right. neil disgrace i'm with you now dave okay I mean, oh my gosh friend. he's a guy that says i don't have we don't have time to talk to flat earthers we have more important things to do but he'll make straw man video after straw man video after straw man video and claim, well, I, you know, he he says he doesn't know something. We know he knows it, right? And it, it's just lie after lie after lie. But those with discernment um, can see. I say, you know, the deceivers out there, there's a whole bunch of deceivers. Whether they're paid or possessed, it's the same thing. I think that uh, the possession is the majority of the people out there that are that are going into the earth. Um, they, they just constantly lie about everything. They will not ever succumb you know they will not agree to anything and uh they're out there and they go after what i call weak minds a weak mind is somebody that's really done well in school 
and you're really good at memorizing and regurgitating and not thinking for yourself. And they they go and they go they come at you. They've got an accent. They speak with confidence, and then they give you crazy math and and they explain things that are so complicated that you go, oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm I'm that's right. I'm, I'm too stupid to understand that. No, you're not too stupid. It's too stupid. There is no extra. Yes. Have to circle back, Dave. Circle. <laughs> Have to circle back you about. Can say, you can say circle. Yes, it is a circle. Just a circle inscribed on the plane. Don't, don't glow back. No, no, no. Um, people, we, we, we've, got, we've got to really look at this. Why does it matter? It matters because you don't want to be living in a lie. It matters because you want to be able to have the ability to discern truth from deception. It matters because of all these other things you talked about, the you know lacking lack of resources and climate change and other things that they are using to control you. It matters because you want to be a person of integrity and intelligence and be able to stand in dignity and not feel that you were duped and bamboozled. So that's where I'm coming from. I would love for people to dig deeper. Um, Dave's got a whole app and, and website for you to dive into. I, I, here's that. We'll, we'll wrap this up in two seconds. Just want to talk about why, why does it matter? It matters because they use money to control us, right? If you're, um, we're born into God's world with, we're inheritors of this realm with equal rights. But at birth, they give us our birth certificate and they, they bring us into their fake global system, which is really a satanic system. And if you play on their ball field, you have to play by their rules. And then they use that and then their money, their fiat money. The biggest laundering, money laundering in the world is space. It's bigger than all of the music, all of the movies and all of the games combined. I think you could add the NBA and the, and the NFL in there also. And space worldwide is more than that. So with, with all of that going on, um, you know, all of that money going there, we have, it's because it's all going to space, but we have people on earth. They, uh, this is a horrible picture, but people are starving. All of, all of the stuff we're wasting money. NASA gets 80 billion, no, $80 million a day, $80 million a day. What have you got? And if they ever do invent something, they sell it to a corporation that sells it to us with our money. We fund them. Okay. So what does it matter? This is the way they keep us in control. Because if everyone woke up to the flat earth, nobody would believe in government anymore. It would be over. It would be finished. This is the key to waking, you know, to stopping, stopping uh, the trafficking of humans. Stop um, just all of the nonsense. Stop starvation. Stop poverty. All of that is because we're lost, disconnected um, in this in this insane world. I mean, being truthers. I have a hard time believing some of the stuff that is really happening. Like I'm looking at like what the elite are doing. I just saw Mark Devlin last night. I don't know if you know who he is. And he does a, a, um, a presentation on uh, the music industry and what's going on with It's incredible. It's incredible what's going on. Um, so again, the world's more interesting than ever. There's nothing to be afraid of. The creator is here for us to help us in this amazing realm. And uh, as soon as we unplug from their satanic system, uh, that's when uh, that's when we can take our take our world back. And I think it's happening faster than we realize. It is, Dave. That is so well expressed. More and more people are beginning to see the truth. And when you showed that image of how much money is going to NASA and space, I want to. I always I always like to flip th things around, like turn the tables. So people are saying, "What does it matter?" Well, let me turn the tables and say, why, why should we even be exploring space? Let, let's say, let, you know, let's go with their uh, concept that, you know, there's space and universe and all that out there. Why even explore it anyway? There are plenty of problems here on earth, you know, in the, on the non-spinning earth that we need to fix. So even if we were to go with their argument or their perspective, why spend all that money in space? It is literally a black hole, if, you, if I could use that phrase. And so turn the tables there and say, what is the use of that? It is a la money laundering. It is, uh, these are performers. You know, one of the memes I have are the, you know, uh, the uh, Challenger shuttle when these individuals are still alive. That's easy to research. So much we've been um, bamboozled on. And I want people to step out of that and say, you know what, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm going to learn. I'm going to dig deeper. And it matters. I mean, it also honors God. Hey, hey.
take it. They want to, Elon Musk wants to put people on Mars. So on Mars, it has 1% atmosphere. That is way less than the top of Everest. Everest has, I don't know, 50% or whatever it is. And, and so, <laughs> so we have to get all the supplies there. We have to build stuff there. We have to create air. Everyone's going to have to live in a dome because we're, we're destroying our planet. How bad do we have to destroy our planet before we need to go to another one? Why don't we just build some domes in Ethiopia in the middle of the desert? Because we have air there already. We can just build railroad tracks to get the stuff there rather than launch it all to, you know, in a, in a six month mission, right? It, it, we have electricity here. You know, it, it's, it's the dumbest thing ever when you look at it, but it's cool. You know, everyone just loves space. It's so cool. But I think this place is way cooler than uh, fantasy out of space, outer space. Well, I love the questions that you're asking, Dave, and that's what people need to do is just ask questions. You know, you mentioned Musk, the one who said, well, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. I guess yeah. that's how they called. They called from the moon. I guess they had cell phones. I can't even get reception in some parts of my house. But then again, I'm not on the moon. Yeah. Nobody is. Nobody right. was. All so right. they, we have the Van <laughs> Allen radiation belts that stop cosmic rays from coming in. Actually, they say if the Van Allen radiation belts were there, we'd all be fried. But we can send a radio signal in the 60s and the early 70s right through <laughs> it. And it goes it goes all the way down to uh, to the Earth. Amazing. Yeah. It's, Amazing. It's, it's and, oh, and, they, and of course, they lost the technology to do so. So that, that's that's their other excuse. It's, well, Dave, I love what you're doing. I'm grateful to be you. on your show. Grateful to be um, on the same page of this non-spinning earth with you. And yeah. Uh, yeah, let's keep keep the message, keep the education going. I appreciate it. Anybody uh, that any of Peggy's healthy Americans, just go to my website, flatearthdave.com. All my socials are there. My YouTube uh, interview vi videos are there. That's where Peggy's will be. If you have the app, it'll be in the interview section there. Um, there's so many resources there. You don't even have to get the app. By the way, the app's $3. One-time charge, but 5% of the app has some higher functions like the friend finder and groups and video calls and all sorts of stuff. There's a subscription for that. It's $11 a year, Peggy. I am, I'm a grifter. $11 well, a year. Well, you know what, Dave? I love that you're taking action and so many yeah, people will complain and not create. You're a creator it, and... Uh, my, my point is that uh, there's plenty of free information on my website. And uh, if, you, if you have the app, it's just in your fingertips. It's for those people that want to educate themselves and have something ready to educate others right at the tips of their fingers. So um, it's, there's, I mean, I see a tremendous shift. And I think there's going to be uh, a, a, a tremendous shift, shift in 2024. Peggy, this information is literally one tweet away from going worldwide, going around the world this way. Okay, <laughs> going around the world. Okay, I love it. And, and and you know, I mean, Elon Musk. But Elon Musk tweeted, "Everybody needs to watch Matt Walsh's What Is a Woman." And I think 175 million people watched it in the next couple of days. Right? Imagine if one of those big celebrities said, "You got to look into Flat Earth. Go here. Go to flatearthdave.com or whatever." Um, overnight, they lose control. When we all unplug from the Matrix, we don't have to take them down. They're just going to collapse. That's right. Yeah. Evil cannot create. It, it, it carries its own seeds of destruction. And uh, God has called us to um, bring this information forward, Dave. Grateful to uh, be on the show and uh, look forward to connecting with you again. All right. Thanks, Peggy. Great talking to you face to face. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.